It's your open source advocate and I'm back. I've got another tutorial and we're covering another VPN option. So uh, a lot of you really seem to like the WireGuard uh, VPN stuff that I've done in the past. Um, I like WireGuard, it's great. It's, it's really easy to set up. It's easy to get going, it's easy to use and, and just, just from my experience. Uh, but it does have some limitations. So if you're trying to do some more complex um, networking it, it takes quite a bit of knowledge to, to do that, first of all. So there's other VPN options out there. OpenVPN is one. I've always found that OpenVPN is a little bit um, harder to set up than I would like to do. And not that it's hard, but just more work than I'd want to do. So as I was looking around a couple of years ago, I came across this called PryTunnel. P-R-I-T-U-N-L. Um, I'll put the link, of course, in the description. Uh, but what they offer is basically an open VPN distributed enterprise level system with IPsec servers and um, it's pretty easy to set up so you can actually go out and get a demo of course you can you know get out there and pay them if you'd like them to host it for you so again I I'm gonna say this every time if you're an IT professional figure out if it's worth your time to set this up and host it yourself is it worth your company's time for you to do that and, and what they're paying you for you to do that maybe it is maybe it's just the best option today maybe you're a small company and this makes total sense but if not then there's always the option of having these guys do this for you and set it up and, and it'll be exactly what I show you it's just that they're gonna host it they're gonna handle all of the hard work and let you kind of focus on the things that you should be focused on which is that local network and that local client base keeping them up and running so I'll scroll down a little bit here. They have what they call PryTunnel Zero. Um, simple virtual private networks, kind of keeping everything connected. So between your different um, locations, different organizations, things like that, where you might be distributed across the world. Um, really easy. Amazon Web Services. So just single sign-on. You've got all kinds of different options here where you can do a lot of different things. And, and all of these major cloud vendors are um, sponsors and supported. They have infrastructure. So you can actually get out there and kind of do that stuff. Um, you can kind of see what the infrastructure looks like. Uh, they have advanced security. They have plug-in systems. I mean, just so much stuff that you can get out here and actually put to use with PryTunnel um, that, that I honestly couldn't go through it all, you know, in a single video and probably not in a, in a, in a five series of videos. It'd, it'd take more than that probably. But for what I'm doing, my purpose is to show you how to set this up so that you can VPN and use your cloud network or your home network depending on what you want to set up um, and, and do that you know when you're at in public Wi-Fi basically if you're at Starbucks or you're at a hotel or you're on an airplane or you're anywhere else where you want to have you know that segregated um, security that gets you away from everybody else that's using that same public network that's that's the big deal for me and that's what I want you guys to get out of this so when you start talking about that, it, it's not that hard. Um, if you're going to set this up to be the server on your home network, you'll have to know how to do a little bit of NAT um, network, you know, um, just, just basically routing things through your own network so that from the outside you can get in and connect to that server. Um, I, I recommend, again, running this on something like DigitalOcean. You don't have to use DigitalOcean. This is just, that's who I like, that's who I prefer, that's who I've always used. There's other VPS servers out there and other, other providers out there, so feel free to go look at them and see what you think of them. Use somebody you know, somebody you trust. That's great. I like DigitalOcean. I've had nothing but really good experiences with them, so that's why I use them. Um, so I'm going to jump over to DigitalOcean right now. Oh, actually, before we do that, um, we're, so when you go to their documentation, they have the installation page, and you can actually jump down here to these scripts and they've got a script for Ubuntu, they've got scripts for Arch, they've got scripts for Debian, they've got scripts for Fedora, they've got scripts for CentOS, they've got scripts for FreeBSD, they've got scripts for any server you want to run, they've probably got a script for it. Um, so find the, the, the version of, of their script that you need for what you're going to be running and, and get it. So I'm just going to copy this. It's, it's not a difficult thing to do. You can even click on this and copy it but just copy it and once you've copied it just make sure it's in your clipboard we'll go set up our DigitalOcean server here real quick so I'm gonna create a droplet and I'm just gonna create a regular empty droplet so standard I'm gonna jump over here I'm just gonna make this the five dollar droplet it doesn't actually have to be a super massive powerful server New York is fine I'm gonna select my keys here so that I can log into it 
and then I'm going to give it a name. So make sure you give it a name that you can find. Otherwise, you have to use the IP. It doesn't. In this case, you don't have to have a domain name, but I like to have one. So I'm going to do vpn.opensourceisawesome.com. Let me double check my spelling. It looks good, and I'm going to click on Create Droplet. So while that's being created, it's just creating a regular Ubuntu 18.04 droplet. I'm going to jump over here to Hover. And I'm on my DNS for opensourceisawesome.com, I'm just going to add an A record. And I'm just going to call that VPN. I'll go ahead and set this for five minutes, and then we'll come back and paste in the IP address from DigitalOcean once it's done creating our droplet. All right, we'll just copy that and we will paste it in. So that should be up and running here in a minute. We've got our entry there, that's great. Now we'll go to our terminal and we will just ssh root at and paste in the IP address. Oops. Oh, it's not up yet. So sometimes I jump in too quick. If you hit this, it's okay. Just wait a few seconds, then try again. Hit the up arrow on the keyboard. It'll bring up your last command. You try again. Now it's given us the good the go ahead there. All right, we are in. We're going to do our update. So we don't have to do sudo. We're in as root. So uh, apt update apt upgrade dash y. So we're going to watch this thing real quick. I'll kind of fast forward through the update. You've seen this happen a hundred times. You ought to know how to do it by now. If not, um, just watch it. It's going to go really fast. So this is where I got to when I messed up my discourse install for my LUG, um, my Linux users group. Uh, where you just saw the 4.15. something generic, and by the way, you just tab hit OK, tab hit OK. I saw it do 415 for some other lower number, for some lower number, and then three some lower number, and all the way down to 3.0. something, and that's where I should have known something went horribly wrong with that update. And it was because I upgraded from a 14.04 version, and I did a dist upgrade all the way through up to the 18.04. Um, I should have just done it and, and just just backed everything up you know backed up taking my discourse back up and then wiped out that server started again with a fresh server and imported it but I, I didn't do it the smart way so um, that was on me but just be aware whenever you see that come up you're, you're really looking to see like what versions you see here if you start seeing it go way down something's probably wrong all right we are going to continue that's up to date so I'm going to reboot real quick Okay, we're logged back in, and this time I logged in using the domain. I'm going to go back over here to my install instructions, and I'm going to copy these instructions one more time. And then I will do the apt update again, just to show you we are on Bionic. So if you're wondering what version of Ubuntu you are on, you can just run the apt update command, and it'll show you which one you're on. So um, back here you can see that they have Bionic, and that's the one that I copied, and the one above it is Xenial. So depending on which release you're on, you just want to make sure you grab the right version of that stuff. So we will paste, we will actually just create an install script. So we're just going to do nano install prytunnel.sh, and we will paste in all of the stuff in that script, and then up at the top, we have to go put in shebang slash bin slash bash so that first line tells it run this as a bash script so it should just go through and try to do all of this stuff as a script and then we will save with control O make sure it's got the name that you want hit enter and then exit with control X and we have our install script now we can do LS and see that here so now we can do dot space dot slash which means in this folder and then just start typing the name and hit tab and it'll fill in the rest of the name of your script if it's the only thing that matches in that directory. And we're going to hit enter and it's going to start running through all the steps that we had there. We just created a script to kind of help us do it without having to copy and paste each one individually. So it's going out and getting some GPG keys and things like that. We're going to just let that run.
All right, everything looks like it ran. So if you want to kind of see what it did, we can look at that script. So first it goes out and it adds some things to the app sources list. So that's the list where it says, hey, where am I getting my information from or my applications and, 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 and data from? Um, after it does that, it goes out and it adds the mongodb.org so it can install Mongo. Then it adds the Pry Tunnel. It goes and gets the repo and adds some keys. It does an update real quick to make sure all of those sources are being used whenever it does the install. And then it says install Pry Tunnel and MongoDB server, which is great. It did that. And then it sets up basically in system D so that Pry Tunnel and MongoDB start automatically whenever you reboot the system. So that's those last two commands. Um, pretty straightforward. It does just exactly what you'd expect. So we'll get out of that. Now we should be able to go to vpn.opensourceisawesome.com and it's telling us our connection is not private. I'm going to advance. It's got a self-signed certificate essentially. And it, so when you first come to the page it's going to give you this indicator of how to get this information to log in for the first time. So we have to run this command right here in our terminal. We need to copy that back out of the terminal and into our browser. And we'll just leave the Mongo URI as it is. There's no reason to change it unless you already have a server that's running this and it's got that name. You want to give it a different name. That'd be the only thing to do. So it's just doing a few things where it's checking the database. It's going to refresh. We'll do it one more time here. So it does have a default password. We will change that once we're inside the system. So I'm going to go run this command to get the default information and then we'll change that once we log in. So no, I don't want my system to remember those things. <clears throat> so when you first get in, it's going to do some initial setup. And with PryTunnel, you basically create an organization. And within that organization, you can have machines and users, um, servers and users, basically. So you can create multiple organizations. So this is a multi-tenant type system. Each organization can have different IP addresses. So if you're hosting this for yourself, but you have... Um, a group that also needs a VPN server for some reason, you can set them up on this same server. Now, make sure that if you're setting up thousands of users on one server, you get a server that can handle thousands of users. If you're doing your home network that's only going to be 20 computers and it's not going to be all of them at once um, having tons of traffic, the $5 droplet's going to be fine. If you're going to have 20 users that all have heavy traffic going all the time, you might want to bump that up. One, because of the transfer rate. Uh, to uh, the transfer data that you get, um, the memory allocation that you have for that server. So there's lots of reasons to kind of think through that and see what's going on, but you can see some statistics once you get it set up. So it wants a new username, which I'm going to give it. So I'm going to say a new password here in a minute. Um, let's see, public IP address. So if that's not the correct public IP address for what you're trying to set up, make sure you put the correct one in. Uh, web console port 443 is fine, that's SSL. And then I'm gonna put in a new password. Um, if you do IPv6, feel free to put in your public IPv6 uh, address as well. I don't, so I'm not going to worry about it. 
And then if you want Let's Encrypt, you can put in the domain right here. So this is VPN. Let's see. Let's try this. And we will save. Okay, so we have no organizations, no users, no servers. Um, I will just remember my stuff and I'll enter it later. So up here you can actually click between the different sets. So you can go to users, you can see any users and then you can add users from here. And you can go to servers, the same way you can add servers from here. So it's kind of a linked system. So an organization needs servers, but servers need an organization. And then users belong to an organization so that they can be part of different servers. Um, so first we have settings. We just kind of did that. So, so just be, you know, be aware that if you need to get back to this, it's up here in the menu bar. We have logs, so you can see logs of what's going on from the system. And then if you want to do some extra things, there are options to upgrade. So you can upgrade to premium or enterprise for a lot of extra features. So just be aware that that's also there. So the first thing we'll do is add an organization. So we'll call this open source is awesome. We'll spell it right. All right, so I'm gonna add myself as a user. I'll give it my name. I do wanna be part of this group. If you have more than one organization, this will give you the option to change which group there or which organization the user is a part of. Um, here. And my pin, so this is just a pin code to be able to log on to the actual VPN. I didn't make my pin long enough. There we go, six digits. All right, so I'm in here as a user now. Now I need to create a server. Oh, you also do have an option to bulk add users if you want to add that information this way. Um, it, it could be really easy if you have a lot of users you need to add. So I'm going to go to a server. I'm going to add a server here. And the server name is going to be OSIA. My DNS server, I don't want that one. I want... That's my uh, open DNS, so we'll use that one. Now here you have the option to change your virtual network IP address. Um, we'll just do it to show that we can. So I'll make it two. Uh, the dot zero slash 24 just says any address after the two. So basically zero through 256 are gonna be useful. Um, so if you want, if you know more about networking and you want to change this, you can, you can do slash, uh, slash 16, but you need to know a lot more about uh, class B networks, I believe. So here's the port, the protocol, um, and you can enable IP, IPv6. Um, you can enable Google Authenticator. So if you want a second factor of authentication, this also works with like free OTP. You don't just have to use Google Authenticator. Um, if you check the box. So we're gonna click add and it's created our server. So this kind of gives you a readout of what's going on in your server. Um, here you can see status, which is offline. So I can take it online, which we wanna do in a minute. So the server must have an organization associated to it. So we're gonna assign the organization to the server basically. We're just gonna attach the organization that part's done and you notice our message goes away. All right, so you see that our server's offline. We wanna take it online, so we're just gonna click on Start Server. And you see it comes online and we get some readout here. You can also see bandwidth graphs, so you can come in and kinda of check the bandwidth usage as you go. So if you're wondering if you're hitting that max whenever you're trying to host other people or host a lot of devices, you can come here and kinda of check and see what's going on. So now that we've got all this set up, we need some devices. From here, in order to add a device, I wanna go back to my users. So each user basically is where you add a device. So at the user level, you will add a device for that user. Um, so you can see I'm offline because I don't have any devices yet. 
but here you can get links you can um, you can download a profile that you can use in their client so they have a client that works on Windows Linux Mac OS so you can download clients for any of those devices you can also use the open VPN client on Android or iOS devices so you have options to do that as well if you click on this little link it brings up a page where you can actually go and grab the information that you need to import into a client so if you're going to use their pry tunnel client you would actually just use this URL here and it would bring in the information that you need so we'll go grab the pry tunnel client I'll kind of show you what that looks like so if you just search for pry tunnel client it'll bring you to the page where they have the open VPN client and it's basically just their version of that and then if you click up here on install it'll bring you to the install page and then you can choose which distro you've got so I'm actually using Ubuntu 19.10 in this case on my, on, my, uh, on my desktop so that's what I want to grab so again I can just create this basically as a simple uh, script so don't be like me pay attention to what you copy and paste into your script I thought I copied this but it didn't copy when I tried and then I paste it in the server script so the first thing I ran was the server script and then this was installed and I thought there was an error so I kept trying to run the install step here and it kept giving me an error about ver log uh, prytunnel.log already being in place and not being able to overwrite it so I finally realized I had mistakenly installed the server piece on my desktop so make sure when you're installing on your desktop you actually get this correct version and you install that and you should be good to go so now if I try to start pry tunnel it is here all right I've got my pry tunnel client installed so I'm gonna go back to my server back here I'm gonna grab this very bottom one I'm just going to copy that and make sure I copy it in this case. So I'll just hit copy. I'm going to bring back up the client. I'm going to hit import profile URI. I'm going to paste that URI in there. And I'm going to hit import. And there we go. I've got it set up. Now you can add more than one um, Pry Tunnel or OpenVPN interface into this. So this is just one, but this is the one that I need set up. So I'm going to close that out and I'll go back to my server view so you can see my server and I'll bring the client up over here a little bit on the right and we will connect so you click on the little hamburger menu here and then you see right here is a button that says connect so you can connect you can rename you can delete it you can do an automatic off you can view the logs and you can edit the config I don't suggest editing the config manually unless you really know what you're doing but you can do that if you want to so I'm gonna hit connect and it wants my pin and there we go we're connected so now you can see this is the IP address that I'm showing to have which is 2.2 .2, which we set up the 2 network earlier so I'll actually just go here and on my local machine to IP address and here it is it's under unknown group but it's under our ton zero so we can see that we are connected we do have that IP address um, now if we go to IP chicken does that show our normal home network or our tunnel I believe this is my tunnel so if I go here and actually bring this up and I turn it off so I will just disconnect you can see that it's gone and up here it's showing disconnected and then we'll refresh IP chicken and you can see there's my home address that's it pry tunnel it's pretty straightforward if you pay attention to what you're doing unlike me it's really easy to get set up and it has a nice little GUI interface that you can use here so it's really really easy for you to kind of get up and running and have set up all right, thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe and share this with your friends if you really got something out of it. And let me know if you have suggestions for making these better in the future. I want to make them as good as I can. Thanks.